So what is a brake caliper and how does it work and why do they fail? So in this case this is a caliper and caliper bracket assembly. So the caliper bracket is this one here and the actual caliper is this piece here. So the caliper is held on to the caliper bracket by two uh, guide pins and the caliper bracket is held on to the knuckle by two bolts. They would go here and here. So there's two main types of calipers, fixed and floating. In this case, this is a floating caliper because we have two guide pins. A fixed one would have no guide pins and would directly mount on the uh, steering knuckle. And in this case, this is what we call a floating caliper since there is two guide pins. A fixed caliper wouldn't have any uh, guide pins. And most of the time, floating calipers are made of uh, cast iron and uh, fixed calipers are made of aluminum. The aluminum uh, calipers are a lot lighter and you'll find them a lot in uh, high performance cars. And in this case, this is a cast iron uh, caliper and uh, mostly found on 90% of the uh, cars on the road today. So this is an important part of your uh, braking system. This is where uh, most of the braking is gonna happen. So your two pads would sit in here and your rotor as well. So the main components are the caliper bracket, the caliper, anti-rattle clip. Uh, on some cars they'll have this or they'll have actual uh, metal shims. Uh, the caliper piston, the boot, and the guide pins, the guide pin uh, bushings, and the bleeder screw whenever we're uh, changing uh, out a caliper. And you have your main piston. So in this case this is a single piston caliper. We have uh, dual piston calipers on uh, many SUVs or trucks. And for high performance cars, you'll have uh, either four or even six piston calipers. So the brake fluid would find its way through the brake line and then through here, this hole here where it attaches to the caliper. It's gonna accumulate in this chamber here. And whenever we press our uh, brake pedal, we're gonna push the fluid. That's gonna push the piston here. And that's gonna push on the pad and s slow the uh, brake disc. And this is where the floating caliper comes into play. So as we push the piston, the first pad is gonna make contact. And since these are greased and are uh, made to move, as soon as the piston pushes on the first pad and the rotor, it's gonna pull the whole assembly backwards. And these ears here are the ones that are gonna push on the outer pad, making kind of a, like a sandwich effect on the rotor and that therefore stopping the vehicle. So to visualize the motion, it's like doing a push-up. So you're pushing off the ground, and as you're pushing off the ground, your body raises up. So this is kind of the same thing. The piston pushes forward on the pad, therefore moving the caliper backwards. And these two ears here will push on the pad that's sitting over here. That's why it's important to have uh, well-greased guide pins, because uh, this is what's gonna allow the caliper to slide back easily and if uh, the guide pins are jammed this will cause the inner pad to get worn out faster than the outer pad sitting here because as soon as it the piston pushes on the inner pad um, the caliper is supposed to slide back but since the guide pins are jammed the outer pad will never touch the rotor so that's why you'll see this a lot on uh, most cars that neglect uh, their uh, maintenance uh, the inner pad will always be worn out faster than the Outer. Now let's take it apart and see what's inside. All right, now to take off the piston, we're gonna shoot some compressed air through this hole here and uh, it should pop out. Watch out, don't put your fingers here because it's gonna wanna blast through it. So here's a closer look at the piston. So it's hollow on the outside here, and in the back it's a flat surface. And this is the dust cover. Just goes on the groove here, and it prevents any dust or road debris to enter into the chamber. And then the last piece is in the chamber here. And the last piece is this square piston seal in here. 
I'm going to go ahead and take it off. Now this uh, seal has a pretty big job. It prevents uh, brake fluid from coming out from the chamber onto the brake pads and rotors. Prevents debris from the outside to enter the chamber. And this is what's responsible for retracting the piston. So when you press your brake pedal, uh, the caliper piston pushes on the brake pads and rotors and this seal flexes because the seal is going to ride like this and as the piston moves up the seal is going to retract and it's going to take the piston with it so just slightly so when you let go of the brake pedal um, the square cut seal is going to retract and therefore bringing the piston slightly backwards so this seal here is the main reason why calipers fail so this seal here uh, goes through a lot of heat cycles and uh, contamination from the brake fluid and this causes it to lose its flexibility and its shape and uh, once it's out of shape or out of flexibility it can't do its job anymore and that's why they uh, they tend to jam the piston and the number one sign that you know that the uh, seal has failed is when you go in to retract the piston and it won't move so that's what we call a failed caliper because the seal inside is uh, jammed up and this seal here when it jams the piston it could jam the uh, brake pads and it could cause a lot of damage to your brake pads and rotors so be careful because this seal could cost you a lot of money a probably a five or ten dollar seal could cause a lot of damage on your car when it decides to jam up so there you have it this was a quick video on how calipers work and why they fail and I hope you learned something new today and as always make sure you like comment and subscribe for more videos like these and I'll see you guys in the next one